Welcome back. This is video two of the series. We're going to try and create a realistic uh, texture from this photo for this 3D model. Uh, and I've got everything lined up right now. We did that in the first video. Uh, and again, to recap what I have, I have the photo on top, which I'm going to use for my texture, the 3D model underneath that, uh, and then a duplicate version of that layer that I rasterized beneath that as well. You're going to see very specifically why I did this step in just a minute. So I'm going to go to the photo layer. Uh, the photo layer is on top. Um, and again, if you need to check things, often you go to multiply or you go to lighten and you can sometimes check different settings and how it's working on the uh, model underneath. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it at normal for right now. And uh, I'm going to go to filter and choose liquify. Now the liquify filter gives you a brush that allows you to sort of nudge points around um, based on the brush settings. Well, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so we can see a little bit more closely what's going on. Uh, and what's really going to help us as we try and determine how this needs to be nudged to fit onto the model is this show backdrop feature, which currently isn't really doing much for us. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from show backdrop, right now it's at use all layers. My mode is set to blend and my opacity is 25%. Uh, you'll see this really doesn't do anything right now. Instead of using all of the layers, I'm going to switch to the mark layer. Now remember the mark layer was the 3D model, the actual 3D model. And what happens here is if I try and use the blend slider here, the 3D model really doesn't know how to display um, its 3D effects, honestly. Um, it's hard to see where the surface features are to align. I can kind of see the contours of the form, but I can't really see things like where the corners of the lips are. Well, the reason why I made that rasterized version is because if I go, instead of using the 3D model, if I actually use the 3D copy, this is just a image of that model and I can see all of the features. So when I turn the opacity back down, um, I'm about 33% uh, from the top layer opacity. Uh, that means the photo is 33%. Uh, I'm ignoring what we see uh, in the actual 3D model. And behind it, I'm just putting the rasterized version of this. Um, now I can actually see exactly what needs to go where. Uh, I can change my brush size in the upper right corner to make a bigger or smaller brush as needed. Uh, in the Liquify tool, you can't just you know right click or lower click if you've got a pen uh, and change your brush size. You have to actually go into the tool options and change it. Uh, but I'm going to start off first with a larger brush, and what I can actually do is just move my photo around um, until it fits right on the head. And you can see here I've actually got just a couple manipulations I need to do to start getting it into place. I move things here like the side of the head um, right onto those cheeks. Remember I was saying in the uh, last video that uh, my actual head here shows up a little bit narrower uh, in Photoshop than it did inside of Maya. Uh, and that's again because the camera settings are slightly different. Let's see if we can get the chin in place. Right here. And um, I might need to actually make my brush a little bit smaller right now. So I'm going to go down about half the size on that. Uh, and I can use this smaller brush to actually nudge things like the nostrils into place now uh, and get a little bit more closer in on the lips. And um, you know what? This is honestly looking pretty good. So let me zoom back out. Uh, we will call that a day on this one, honestly. Uh, and I'm going to choose OK. Uh, and you're going to see what happens is it actually does a whole sort of weird little distort here on my mesh. If I jump back through my history, you can see his head starts to look really weird. Um, but that's me distorting this to fit the way the model is working. Uh, and this should end up quite all right. Now, my next step is I'm going to merge this layer down onto my actual 3D model. Forget about the 3D copy. We no longer even need it. I can drag that to the trash if I want to. Um, I'm going to take this actual texture, which now should fit exactly onto my 3D model, as we see here by changing the opacity. And at 100% opacity, I'm just going to hit Control-E and merge it 
right onto my model and it should render this out converting this onto the texture and I'll hit K so we can see how this rotates around and there we go um, it looks a little bright right now but again remember that's actually because of the fact that I've turned up this self illumination uh, and I've turned up these ambient values and let me find a good medium ground that looks all right for us Let me see if I can add some glossiness and shininess back into this a little bit. Might make it easier to see what we've got. And here we go. A lot of detail captured on this. You know, really all of those photo elements are here. And we've started out with a very, very nice texture. Well, working on from this, um, we're going to look at how to save out the texture that we have. Uh, and in the third video, we're going to look at how we can add in additional textures until we fill in all of the white spots. Um, the white spots, things you'll note about this, though, uh, and the controls that I have set up, um, you'll see at some point it just sort of like drops off and stops. Uh, that control is found underneath the 3D menu uh, in the paint fall off section. Uh, there's two values in this dialog box, a minimum angle and a maximum angle. Uh, the minimum angle is where it starts to uh, bleed and the max angle is where it stops painting. Uh, that's where uh, the surface finally turns away from you and it decides not to actually put any uh, texture on there because it would stretch too much like we see here. Uh, the defaults are uh, actually 45 degrees to 55 degrees which I find actually gives you a very blurry, very narrow result. Uh, I like some of the more stretchy areas. I can sometimes use some of that. It helps me overlay with the other results. Um, I find, you know, you obviously shouldn't go past 90 or that's gonna give you some bad results. Uh, I find if I go to about 85 in both of them, it gives me very crisp results. And you see here I've got a very sharp edge on this. Uh, but this is looking pretty solid to me. Let me reset this to the front and we will see what's up here. Uh, let's take a look at the actual texture now. Uh, I'm going to go, I've got the model selected, I'm in the 3D uh, menu set, uh, and I'm going to go into that texture palette and I'm just going to choose open texture. This is color1.psd uh, and you can see how it automatically distorts the photo to fit the UVs. Now I could do things like coming in here and painting flat on the UVs now if I wanted to but there's no reason to do that. I could also just come in and save this image right from here, uh, but I usually prefer to save it out into a different place a little later on. So we're gonna pause for right now before we get to video three. Uh, and in the third video, as you'll see, we're gonna try and get a little bit of extra detail on here using another method to uh, try and get some detail onto the ears, for instance. So hold on, video three is coming right up. <laughs> 